Situated in northern England is one of the most toxic and hazardous places on Earth. Sellafield Nuclear Plant was built in the 1940s to develop nuclear weapons, and one particular building on this site has amassed almost an entire Olympic swimming pool full of toxic and deadly waste. The nuclear program was initially a way to protect Britain, but has now become a threat to themselves. And as we'll get into, the UK authorities are facing the monumental task of moving this waste to a safer facility. In August 1945, two atomic bombs were dropped on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and cemented victory for the Allies in World War II. The war was over, but there was no guarantee that peace was going to last. After the war, the United Kingdom was trying to rebuild its country from ruins. The state began rebuilding houses, schools and hospitals, but also reinvigorated its military capacity. Both Britain and France decided that in order to protect themselves from the Soviet Union, they needed to build nuclear weapons as a deterrent. In 1947, Sellafield Nuclear Plant was built with the sole purpose of developing plutonium, a substance needed for generating an atomic bomb. But with plutonium, there is waste. And not just any waste, toxic waste and Britain's future generations would be faced with the highly dangerous burden of removing this later on. At the time, Britain was in a rush to build nuclear weapons before their enemies did, and with the clock ticking, they decided to store the nuclear waste in a building without any plans of how this was going to be removed. This was seen as a permanent vault for nuclear waste, set to be locked up forever once it was full. The design for this vault was inspired by the American grain silo. The building is known as the Pile Fuel Cladding Silo, or PFCS. Like the cladding you would see in a house, this cladding is a protective metal casing that surrounds the uranium fuel rods that were loaded into nuclear reactors. After the rods were used, this cladding was peeled off, and the only thing they could do with this highly toxic material is to leave it in this repository. By the early 1970s, this nuclear dumping ground was full. The Sellafield plant also generated nuclear energy in 1956, but a year later, a fire occurred in one of the reactors, creating one of the worst nuclear disasters in history. A study found that 240 extra cancer deaths occurred in the surrounding area because of this fire. Today, the Sellafield site comprises more than 200 nuclear facilities and more than 1,000 buildings. Walking into this site is like entering an entirely different world, and is jokingly referred to as Nuclear Narnia. Over the years, Sellafield developed a negative reputation. The 1986 incident in Chernobyl fully opened people's eyes up to the dangers of nuclear power, and the location of Sellafield has incited diplomatic issues with Norway and Ireland, who could also be affected by any disaster at the plant. In 2002, British Prime Minister Tony Blair received 1.3 million postcards from Ireland, all with a picture of an eye and captioned with, Tony, look me in the eye and tell me I am safe. And on the 31st of March 2003, the Sellafield power plant was closed. Since its closure, the site has been involved in the storage and decommissioning of nuclear waste. Today, the Sellafield site continues to be monitored carefully, and the PFCS is one of many buildings that is under close watch. Extra shielding was covered across the building in the 70s and 80s. Argon gas was also introduced, so if a fire broke out, this gas would starve the fire of any oxygen. In the past 10 years, a massive superstructure was built surrounding this building. However, even that was not enough to keep things 100% safe. At the moment, this building is not up to safety standards, and everything needs to come out. According to the UK's Office for Regulation, PFCS is considered to pose an unacceptable risk to the workforce, public, and environment due to the combination of an aging structure which does not meet modern nuclear design standards and the hazardous waste inventory contained within the silo. 
Glenn Moss, engineering manager at Cavendish Nuclear, said, The waste has been in the silo for 50 plus years, and it was not built with emptying in mind. Delivering the project is very, very difficult. So how can you move nuclear waste? Is it even possible to safely take the waste out of this permanently shut building? Well, the answer to this question is currently taking place right now. The UK's Nuclear Decommissioning Authority and the American engineering company Bechtel are working on the monumental task of removing mounds of nuclear waste and could be providing the blueprint for decommissioning nuclear power plants across the globe. Before this cleanup began, the team worked further north in Rosyth, Scotland. Here, they developed the equipment needed and embarked on trial work demonstrations to test out future operations. The staff also used virtual simulations to get them used to the tools involved. Central to this cleanup is a 500-ton crane, which is the weight of about three houses. When you were a child, you probably remember using one of the arcade claw machines where you controlled the movements of a claw and endeavored to potentially pick up a teddy bear. This is the type of machine they are using, except on an insanely bigger scale and with insanely bigger safety concerns. Chris Hallowell, who has worked on these robotic claws at Sellafield, said, We go in to retrieve the waste using the sort of the equivalent of a fairground grab. It's a lucky dip arrangement. We get what waste we will get. In 2017, Sellafield got to work on this historic cleanup. Holes were cut into the PFCS, then sealed by steel doors to ensure safer storage. Sellafield has described it as the most complicated hole in a wall ever made. The building contains over 845,000 gallons of intermediate level waste, which is 85% of the total volume of an Olympic swimming pool. All of this waste is considered intermediate nuclear waste, which will remain toxic for 100,000 years. The waste inside the building exists in six different compartments, so six holes were created to get access to each one. It was not until six years later, in 2023, that nuclear waste was finally being removed. And, as you can imagine, nuclear experts across the world were keeping a close eye on what was happening in the north of England. The radioactive waste is taken from the claw and placed inside a box of stainless steel. One of the biggest risks is that the argon gas inside, which prevents any fires from spreading, could possibly escape when they are taking out the waste. Once the box is shut, it will be transported to a more fit-for-purpose facility known as the Box Encapsulation Plant Product Store. The cleanup began in August 2023, but don't expect them to be finished anytime soon. The stainless steel boxes can only roughly hold 800 gallons. And remember, we are talking about over 800,000 gallons of waste. This process has been compared to emptying a full trash can with a teaspoon. And the PFCS is just one of the many buildings on the Sellafield site that needs to be decommissioned. The ultimate goal for Sellafield and nuclear power plants across the world is to dump their waste in what's known as a Geological Disposal Facility, or GDF, which will be bored thousands of feet below the Earth's surface. Finland, Sweden, and France are other European countries looking into these GDFs. Figures from May 2022 estimate that it will cost 110 billion pounds, which is about 138 billion dollars. When Sellafield began after World War II, the project required an unprecedented amount of ambition, dedication, and money. And it looks like even more of this will be needed to clean up the site too. The first GDF in Britain is expected to be available in 2050, and Sellafield is not expected to be fully decommissioned by the 2150s. The people working on the cleanup will no longer be around to see the fruits of their labor. However, it was the short-term thinking of the British government after World War II that created this issue, and thankfully, this cleanup is hopefully paving the way for a safer world for future generations. What do you think about this project? Perhaps you live near Sellafield or in a country where decommissioning is also happening. Whatever your thoughts, we want to hear them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.